What a crazy trip. Welcome back. In my last video, I explained how to use a tool to calculate SNR for a deep space target. You can use that tool to estimate how much total exposure time you'll need for that target. In that video, I told you to get your camera's gain in electrons per ADU and read noise in electrons. Astro camera manufacturers usually provide this information. What if you have a DSLR, or you want to double check what the manufacturer says? In this video, I'll tell you how to measure those yourself. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. A few of you asked in the comments of my previous video how to get the read noise and gain of a DSLR, since that information isn't readily available on the internet. I remember DSLRs. When I first started out, I used an unmodded DSLR. Trying to shoot a mission nebulae in a Bortle 10 zone was a major fail. But eventually I upgraded to a small sensor CCD camera and was able to take pictures with various filters and whatnot. Like this nine panel mosaic of the horse head nebula. Yeah, it really is nine images stitched together. Okay, where was I? Oh yes, read noise and gain. You can find out how to get those numbers in detail on cloudy nights in a blog written by Craig Stark. That'll be linked in the comments. Anyway, let's get started. This is going to be super complicated just kidding. It's actually really easy. You're going to need to take a few bias frames and a few flat frames with your camera and use Serial or PixInsight or whatever software that can give you the camera pixels and ADU. Serial is free, so let's go with that. Oh, and math. We need to do a bit of math, but it's pretty simple, especially if you have some sort of spreadsheet program like Microsoft Excel or LibreOffice Calc. LibreOffice Calc is free, so let's go with that too. First, how do we get the camera's gain in electrons per ADU? You're going to want pairs of flat frames with different brightness values, but the same exposure time. Aim for an exposure time of about 100 milliseconds. Let's say that you usually take flat frames with a tablet. Turn the brightness down really low and take two flat frames in manual mode of your DSLR. Use the same ISO that you use when taking astro images. Turn the brightness of the tablet up a bit and take two more flat frames. Repeat this a few more times so that you get five or six pairs of flat frames with different brightness levels ranging from pretty dark to pretty light. Avoid clipping the histogram though. Here's an example of what you'll want. As you can see, I have a pair of flat frames that are dark, a pair that is a bit lighter, and three other pairs that get progressively brighter. Note that I faked these flat frames. These are just for demonstration purposes. We now need to analyze the flat in Cyril. Open up Cyril and click Image Processing Pixel Math. Use the plus sign at the top to add images. In the Images section, now that they're loaded, you'll see a table that has a variable and path. Each row is a flat frame, the variable column just names each image, and the path shows you the folder the image is in. I went ahead and renamed my images from P1 to P10. Now that the images are named, you can do all sorts of neat things, like subtract one image from another. Interestingly, that's exactly what we want to do for each pair of flats. My flats P1 and P2 are a pair, P3 and P4 are a pair, and so on. In the RGBK input section, start subtracting each pair. I'll go ahead and put in P1 minus P2 and click Apply. Cyril subtracts one frame from another and then outputs the image. Right-click on the image and click Statistics. Look for the standard deviation and record it. Repeat this for each pair of flats, and you'll end up with the same number of standard deviation values as you have pairs of flats. So in this case, I have five standard deviations associated with each flat pair. Stop it! You'll also need to record the average or the mean brightness value for each pair of flats. To do this, just put in one of the flat frames in the RGBK input section and click Apply. 
This will just make Cyril output the raw flat frame. Right click on the image and find the mean value. You can skip the other flat frame that has the same brightness, but make sure you have a mean brightness value for each pair of flat frames. If you have 5 pairs, meaning you have 10 flats, you'll need 5 mean brightness values. Open up LibreOffice Calc and create four columns. Call them Mean, 2 times Mean, Standard Deviation, and Variance. Put the values that you just recorded for the brightness values in the Mean column. Put the Standard Deviation values in the Standard Deviation column. We need to multiply the mean brightness of each pair of flats by 2, so go ahead and do that and put that information in the 2 times Mean column. We also need the variance of the difference between the flats. Variance is just standard deviation squared, so all we need to do is multiply each standard deviation value by itself. Next, let's take a plot of the two times mean and variance. Select one column by holding down left click, press Ctrl and select the other column. Then click Insert Chart. Find Scatter and click Finished. Right click on the plot and select Add Trend Line. Make sure Linear is selected as well as Show Equation. We're almost done with finding the gain. The gain should be this number right before the X in the equation. But there's just one problem. It looks like the 2 times mean value is on the X axis and variance is on the y-axis. You can tell because the variance numbers are bigger and the bigger numbers are on the y-axis. Do we have to start over? No. Take the number, in this case 8.12, and get the inverse of it. In other words, do 1 divided by it. In this case, I get 0.12. That's the gain. Remember that my number is actually faked. Typical gain values range between 0.2 and 1.2. So if you get a number that is a lot bigger than this, you've probably flipped the X and Y axis. Let's go ahead and get the correct chart just for funsies. All you have to do is move the variance column to a column that is to the left of the 2 times mean column. Select the two columns and create the chart again. Right click to add the trend line and make sure the equation is shown. The number before the X is the correct gain value this time. Minimize the spreadsheet, but don't close it yet. It's time for the read noise. Take some bias frames from your camera. It's probably a good idea to wrap tin foil around the lens or a telescope cap to make sure infrared light doesn't mess up the numbers. Take about 30 bias frames and then make a master bias. Load a master bias and single bias frame into pixel math and serial again. I rename my master bias M and my single bias as B. In the RGB input section, type M minus B and click Apply. Right click on the resulting image and click Statistics to get the standard deviation. Write that down. We'll call this the raw read noise. Then open the spreadsheet again. Multiply the gain in electrons per ADU that we calculated with the flat frames by the read noise the raw read noise that we collected with the bias frames. The resulting number is your read noise in electrons. And that's it. You've measured your camera's gain in read noise. Remember, the numbers you found are only good for the ISO that you took the flats and biases with. But now you can use the SNR calculator I created. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.